We pass through uh, a mode to uh, portion. We are passing by the period that we have to combine our divinity and the divinity of God. Um, Emoru means say, but the say with recognition and realization that we have to understand in our life. Why our God gives us this uh, recognition and realization? Because if we are not the combined, if we are not united with the divinity of God, uh, we can't accomplish the one body, one heart. Only one body, one heart is the, the only mission that we have to accomplish in our life. Otherwise, uh, there's no way to uh, participate in the body of Christ. We have to combine uh, as a pieces of the, the body of Christ so that we can be a part of the body of the Christ after we die, of course, now uh, as well. So uh, throughout this tropician, we will learn about uh, the one body, one heart to be combined with our uh, God's divinity. All right? Let's praise our God together with our worship team. What is the core haka vote? Core haka vote. Uh, as she uh, testified, this is core. Core means whole. Haka vote. Haka vote is the glory. Glory is, this is a bad. Bad is individual. This is cough. Cough is application. This is a whole. So what does it mean? All individuals should be applied in one body. That is called glory. That is our God's glory. So every piece of his body should be combined to be attached to our Christ. That's called glory. That's called hakabod. Um, one body, one heart. Why that is our own, uh, why that is our only the mission that we have to achieve? Because without this vision, um, we are scattered. We are just kind of uh, divided sections that we try to live alone. As like, uh, like a kidney, like uh, intestines, like uh, heart, like lung. If you pull out uh, one of the, the pieces of your intestine outside of your body, how can this piece can live alone? It's impossible. Right? If you believe, you guys are all the pieces from the body of Christ, we have to be united again. That is only the mission that we have to follow. That's why in Uzbek trip, um, about to preach it, the knowledge of being born. What was the knowledge of being born? Issachar, Zebulon, Samuel is a Naphtali, and Henry is Reuben, right? So we have our own certain tribe, which is a uh, own colored tribe, own colored person. We are all different person, depending on the time of God, uh, which our God planted from the Kedem. So, 
if we are divided into the, the individual life, we have to be combined as a one body again. That's our God's mission and our mission that we have to achieve. Today's proportion is amor. Amor. Let's repeat after me. Amor. Amor means say. Amor is say. Mm. Do you know what kinds of thing uh, which is consisting of the human being? Human being consists of two things. The first thing is called spirit. First thing is the spirit. And second one is called soul. Spirit and soul. Soul is called outer person. Outer person. Outer being. Spirit is called inner being. We call this soul as a vessel. So our soul contains the spirit which is from our God. He poured out his spirit into us. So the vessel should be needed to contain the spirit from the God. So your spirit, your spirit is specified as a tribe which is following the time of God that our God started with His word. So that's why this soul is needed to contain the spirit from the heaven. But how this spirit can be come out? That's the question, right? Because if we live for example, in the world, uh, in the world where you are living, uh, always required to be uh, enhanced in terms of the skills and kinds of experiences, like like Henry is doing his work in the factory of a fan, and he has to be skilled person to do something to uh, to to make his work easily more and more. Right, Henry? So he has to be a skillful person. For what? For taking the core of work. Then the core of work, the core of skill, can be come out through his vessel, through his skilled person, which is the soul. Uh, the word trains us. The word trains us. That's why our soul can be developed. Our soul can be developed. Why? Because our soul, our soul should be developed to let our spirit come out. Do you think like uh, Sungje and Sunny can come out with the spirit? Sometimes they can show very spiritual things because it's pure. But we have to be skilled to let our spirit come out. That's why our God gives you the time to let your source develop. You don't know how this spirit is going on. Um, why Raymond came to Korea? Why Raymond came to uh, Korea to meet Olam? He didn't know it, but his spirit knew it. His spirit uh, has been ready to be come out for this time. But his soul 
didn't know it. But if he decided to follow the Jesus, and the Jesus waited for that time to let him to go to the way that uh, let his spirit come out again. Mm, so, in order to meet Olam, he came to Korea. That's why he made uh, some mistakes before. He made uh, different plans to, to enter the UN, <laughs> things like that. But he realized that uh, that all the journeys were prepared for his time to meet Olam as an Eckhart. So sometimes we do not understand our journey, our way, uh, our life. Nias uh, couldn't expect more than five years to stay in Korea with a G1 visa. It's uh, almost impossible. But God allowed it. And also, He supported him with you know, I can call this Avengers team. <laughs> like a um, spurrier lawyer, uh, brother team. He always helped him to make the statement to submit. Doctor, brother Daniel helped him and spurrier manager for him <laughs> to control everything between all of the, uh, the parties. And the house owner even gave him the house without paying. <laughs> Every member around him support him. Why? Why? We have to understand. One body, one heart means Eckhart. What is Eckhart? The Eckhart means groom and bright. Who is bright? Niaz, Niaz is bright. And our Jesus is a groom. So, if my bride is in danger or a difficult situation, doesn't husband help the bride? Definitely he will help, right? So, the first thing that we have to make is I have to make my decision to follow the vision of one body, one heart. Then everything will be upon your life because our groom, as a husband, will protect you. Everything. There is a condition. There is a condition. The only condition that we have to remember, what is that? The problem of this uh, organization is spirit is surrounded by soul. Do you understand? This soul is surrounding your spirit. This soul is called my thoughts, my emotion, my judge, my opinion. Everything that you have inside of you. So this soul is very, very solid. As your soul is developed, but your soul is going to be solid more. Very hardened. Because you experience the something that you thought is right. And you always choose what you chose before. Based on your experience. And your soul goes on the way to think of your own way. More and more. So, it's very, very difficult to crush. To crush.
crash. You have to crush your soul. Then your spirit can come out. Because your spirit is surrounded by your thought, your opinion, your judge. But your spirit thinks differently. That's why we have to understand this one. Then you can uh, come out of your soul, your thoughts. Let's see the Leviticus chapter 21 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priest, the sons of Aaron, and said to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die. So, a priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die. It means the priest do not touch the people who die. Okay? If we see the Hebrew version, the dead body who die is nefesh. La nefesh. This is la nefesh. Uh, lo itame. So, uh, this is interpreted as a dead body. The people who died. It's a strange, right? Nefesh was uh, interpreted as a soul. Right? Soul and dead body has the same word, the nefesh. What is that? If you live without spirit, if your thoughts is always working for your life only, then your life is dead body. Who you are? You are a priest like a king. So this message is talking to you. If you are a priest, do not touch this dead body. Do not live for the soul, outer person. The outer person, this soul, always give you your own truth. Your own truth. As you are experiencing your life, then you accumulate your truth only. You know what? In a certain house, uh, which is dominating many truths, like uh, you have to eat something this you have to... Uh, you don't have to do something. If you have a lot of standards which is made as your truth, then the children can be very confused. Right? This is the truth. But what is the spirit? Spirit is called love. Spirit is called love. This is just will. Will. Our God's will is all about loving others, loving his children, loving his bride. That's our God's own will. And that is only the will that our God wants us to know. Truth is connected understanding. We always do the something based on our understanding. Um, in this Torah portion, uh, the verse, the Leviticus chapter, Leviticus chapter 22, 23. Chapter 22, verse 23. You may, however, present as a free will offering an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted, but it will not be accepted in fulfillment of a vow. 
So there's the two kinds of offering here. The first one is a free will offering. The other one is the offering for vow. Okay? Let's just see together. I, I erase here. So free will offering is uh, nadav. Nadav is not offering, just just a free will. Free will, and it could be volunteer. Volunteer. And offering for a vow, the accepted in fulfillment of a vow means offering for a vow. So we have two kinds of offerings here. So the other one is nadar. Nadar is vow. Nadar is a vow. See, however present as a free will offering, an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted. So, uh, it will not be accepted. It will not be accepted. But actually, the vow offering is only can be accepted. So, when, it's the same, noon and dalet, Noon dalet. What is the difference? The only difference is bet lash. What was the bet? Henry, what was the bet? Do you remember? Bet is a system, right? It's a system. And lash you didn't learn yet, but lash is head. So, this one is not accepted, but only this one can be accepted. If you understand, then you can build up the house. Now, you have a plan, you have a scheme, like you have a drawing, because you learned about Torah so far. So, you learned about the spiritual world, how you can be united with your neighbors, how you can give your life. Now you have your truth. Now you have your understanding. That is the era of the soul. But this lash is about spirit. If your rash, if your head is not changed, then you cannot be accepted. Even if you have, do you remember what was free will? Free will is not used for choosing something you like. Free will is only used for choosing something that you, your spirit must take. So sometimes people are confused about the free will. Oh, if I have a free will, I can choose everything that I can with my ability, with my uh, properties. Anything that I have, I can choose it. No, that's not free will. But the free will always using, used for making balance between the physical world and spiritual world. And you always make the balance with your free will. So, nadar, this is nadar. Nadar is a vow. If you make the vow, then you can be accepted. What is the vow? Um, there was a kind of a practice. There was a kind of a practice. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, what did you do? You pray. 
right? You prayed with the person who delivered you the message of the gospel, then you prayed together and you took the oath on it. That is the vow. So that is the first vow that you could make in your life. Then you go into the, the further ways and further the process that you have to go through more. And you will pass through the nadar. Then you can be accepted as offering. So your soul is comprised of your own desires. Your own desires. But spirit has no desires. It's just love. It's just love. Do you know what is the difference, difference between emor and dabar? Last year, uh, you guys learned. Uh, let's erase it here. You guys learned dabar. Da, dabar. And today's proportion, and more. And more. This is and more. What is the dabar and and more? Dabar is a speak. And and more is a say. What is the difference? Do you know what our God used the word uh, when our God created the earth? Dabar or emor? Dabar? Dabar? You think? How about emor? Is there anyone who think of the, the emor is the word that our God used for making the word at the first time? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he used Amor, Vayomer. Vayomer. That was our God, uh, God's word he made at the first time to create the word. Why Amor? Why Amor? Because uh, Dabar, speak, is just as it is. For example, do you think light is made by our God? Light was in the Kedem, but he just revealed when our God tried to make our world. Everything was in the Kedem. Raymond was in the Kedem. Niaz was in the Kedem. Hany and Samuel were in the Kedem. But you are made in this time, right? Dabar, Dabar was in the Kedem. But Amor is the ability to make it materialize in the world. Do you understand? People only live with their own, re uh, their own recognition their own realization. Somewhere, can you live without your realization? If you do not know any kinds of information about the Korea, can you come to Korea? No, impossible. And if you do not know any kinds of knowledge about your factory, can you walk? No. If you do not have any knowledge about our church, can you come? No. Every person only moves in their way with their understanding, their realization, their recognition. How you can get it? With amor. With amor. Do you think the knowledge that now you have was not existing before? No. It was. 
It was. The dabar was existing. The light existed before. But this and more could make it materialized. Do you understand what I mean? It's important. Our God tried to understand us to reveal the spirit is here. The spirit should come out with our recognition by the and more of our God. And more of specifically our Jesus. That's why Jesus came to us to reveal all of the secret and mystery of the Torah. Um, this is Iver. This is Iber. Iber. Uh, Iber is blind. In this Torah portion, the priest must not bring any kinds of offering who has blemish, who is a flaw. Then you cannot give offering with this uh, sacrifice. The core of uh, blemish uh, offering is blind. What is blind? Blind has truth. Blind has understanding. But they cannot see. They cannot see. They are only in the stock of their world that they are normally thinking of. So they are called blind not to see the world where our God wants us to see. That's called Mum. That's called Mum. Mum. Mum means blemish. Mum is blemish. What is the blemish? Blemish has two truths. Mem is a truth. Okay? There's a two mems. The first mem for your life. The soul. The other man is for your spirit. So if you have two truths, then you have blemish one. You can't give the offering to our Lord as a priest because our God called you as a priest like a king. And one thing, what is What is a profane? Oh, sorry. Profane is halal. Uh, halal. Halal means profane. So if any kinds of offering which is profane, you shall not make your offering to be given to our Lord as well. So if the offering which is blemish and profane, it will not be allowed to be given to our Lord. What is the halal? Halal has two lamed, right? It's a mystery. Mum has two mems, and Halal has two Ramed. Ramed is training. You have two training. You have two training. Training for the physical world, training for the spiritual world. But you never, for, you never give up two trainings, both of them, because you think both are important for you. Do you know what is the blemish? What is the unclean one? You step on both sides of the words. You have to step on 
One size only. That's clean. That is clean. But if you stab on both sides of the words, you are called profane offering and blemish offering. That's why our God said to Moses, to say to the priest, do not take the offering which is blame, which is uh, profane, which is uh, blemish. Our Lord is a living God. That's why our God wants us to understand it. Let's see the Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites, right? You are, you shall be kingdom of priests and a holy nation. What Torah portion we passed through already? Kedoshim. Kedoshim was a saint and a holiness. If you pass through Kedoshim, then you are eligible for becoming a kingdom of priests. Now our God said to Moses to set to priest something that he has to keep. Right? Um, let's just see one more verse. Uh, Leviticus chapter 21, verse 13. And 14, 13 and 14. The woman he marries must be a virgin. What is a virgin? Virgin is Betula. Virgin. Virgin is uh, Betula. What is Betula? Uh, the virgin, the virginity, uh, is the one who never used the will of receive for herself. All right? She never used any will of the receive uh, for herself. But what about us? We always use our will of receive to receive something for my life. Then you cannot be called as a virgin, Betula. And you can be called divorced one. Divorced woman. Which is called Garash. What is garage? Divorce woman uh, is the one who uh, voluntarily be apart from the husband to be head for herself because he she never accepted uh, the ownership of the husband in the household. That's why she got divorced from the husband. To be head. To be head. So, Garash was used in the, the verse of the Genesis when our God uh, drived out the Adam and Eve. But actually, do you know what was the meaning of the Garash at that time? Adam and Eve got divorced to the Lord. That was the correct interpretation. It means they made, they made themselves to go out of Garden of Eden. Our God never let them go, but they made it. That was the word of Garash that was used. Let's see. Um, let's see where it is. Mm. 
Mm-mm. Met uh, Corinthians. Uh, first Corinthians. Ah, yes. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. Yes. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. So our Jesus is the last Adam, and he is a life-giving what? Spirit. He came to us to make our spirit come out. That is the meaning of a life-giving spirit. When we accept our Lord as a bridegroom, our God will let your spirit inside of you come out to be united with our Lord again. So our Lord can be interpreted as a amor as it is. He said to you with the recognition and realization. Then with your realization and recognition about the one body, one heart, then you can come out to give the life as a spirit because our last Adam is a life-giving spirit. All right? That's a very important one. Why we are combining the divinity and divinity nowadays, Omer count? Why we do Omer count? Because Omer count is the process that uh, killing your ego, but you combine your divinity inside of you in the spirit with the divinity of God to let your spirit come out. Without Omer count, on the 50th day of uh, uh, Omer counting, which is uh, Siban 6, you can't receive the Holy Spirit. Because if you are not accomplished as a spirit, then you cannot be combined with the spirit because our God is a spirit. If you are inclined, still, the soul side, then how your spirit can be combined with the Holy Spirit, which our God will pour out on the, the Siban 6th, on the Shabbat. That's why our God gives you the time to be transformed as the same divinity of our God. This Omer count is very important, all right? Um... Let's conclude today's sermon. Our God wants us to get married to Him. That is only the mission and vision that our God wants us to reveal through our life. If we get married to Him, we can be called Eckhart. As I cited the examples of the Niyas nowadays, if we became bright, God will protect everything. If someone inserts my wife, how I can be? I have to protect her. Same. Bridegroom, the husband, will always protect his bride. The only thing that we have to make our decision is to choose the spirit, to crush the soul, to Kill your ego, which is inside of your outer being. Then your spirit, which is inner being, will come out to be combined with our God's divinity. All right? Let's pray. Today we learned about soul and spirit. What we always pursue is my standard, my understanding. 
we always think of the something that I experienced. That's why we judge someone immediately. If we think I'm right, he's wrong, and I always judge he's wrong. Based on my experience, my standard, my understanding. But God said, Spirit inside of you is toward only love. Shall we try to love our neighbors with the vision, one body, one heart? If we do not understand, our God's will, our God's love. We are just lost one. I don't want us to be just pieces away from the body of Christ. Today, let's make our correction. Let's make our rectification to return to God. To return to the body of Christ, to return to the pieces which is a part of the Christ body, so that we can we can join any participation for the the works of the heaven for the body of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us this wonderful message. Drove us to your arms, but we are raised to be driven out of your arms because we think I am a complete body, but Lord. Follow this vision. I want to meet my half and my pieces, which was one in the canon, so that I can practice the real love that you taught me. Heavenly Father. Thanks for letting us this wonderful message and mystery. Today, we want to confess the sinness in my soul, which was only in my soul, which was based on my experience, my standard. But today. I will throw out all my experience, my perspective, to receive your love, which is spirit, so I can be combined with my neighbors, with the spirit, even if I can be mistreated by by my neighbors, but I can treat all the. The happening in my life, which should be based on your love, Lord, give us your mercy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs>